Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. I was thinking about the opening prayer, uh, and I heard it first yesterday when we prayed it, and it said that God will direct all our actions, and that God wanted us to abound in good works, not just have some works, but abound in good works. And I was thinking about that because I was in a class once when I was in graduate school, and it was one of those classes where you get together in a small group and everyone evaluates everyone, really like in-depth psychotherapy kind of evaluating. And one guy said to me, Steve, I noticed you never do anything unless you're good at it. And I thought, wow, that's kind of weird, but I think he's right. I pretty much don't do anything unless I'm good at it. Anyone else like that? Anyone else? Yeah, yeah, some of the hands going up like this. Yeah. You know why? Because I don't, I don't want anybody to think I'm, you know, not good at something. I don't want anyone to think I'm not good enough or that I'm dumb or that I'm not talented or something like that. And you know what? I, I really am dumb and not talented. I don't know why I try to hide that. And, uh, but uh, there's some mindsets. You notice babies don't try to hide that and little girls don't try to hide that. You know, they're working on their language. They're like, they like uh, burp, and their dad's like, he said, dad, dad. No, he didn't. He burped. No, he said, dad. Did you hear it? Do it again, honey. Yeah. And so kids just try and fail and try and fail. They fall down. They do all that sort of thing. But Jesus, when he comes preaching, he comes out of the, the desert today, and he says, the Holy Spirit's on me. And he says, I've come to preach good news to captives. I'm the captive. I'm the one who doesn't want to do anything because I want, don't want to look bad. You know what I mean? Good news to captive, to set the captives free, it says, to, to, to give liberty to those who are oppressed, to, to open up the eyes of the blind. Now, what are the eyes of the blind? Well, literally, he opened the eyes of the blind, but also uh, there's an eye of sinful man that can't see because we're blinded by sin. And so Jesus comes out preaching in Mark, and what's his first words in the Gospel of Mark? He says, change your mind. Change your mind. Another place he says, unless you become like a little child, you can't get this mindset. You, it, the mindset we want you to have is a little child mindset. Change your mind and believe that good news about the Gospel. Quit, quit worrying, quit having this mindset. And so I was reading this book called Mindset, and the one's mindset is basically this. I want to look smart. 
I want to look talented. Basically, I want to look flawless, right? And I want to do it right now. I desire success. And when I get it, I think I'm superior, right? That's the mindset. And Jesus can't work with those people at all. And I think we're all afflicted with that mindset because either we think we're superior or we go the other way with it. Some of us are full with not believing the gospel. Remember, repent and believe the good news. You know what the good news is? You're a child of God. You're loved. You have a dignity about you because you're made in God's image. Made in God's image. Uh, God came for you and God wants you to just keep trying like this little child. Just don't give up. I got a lot of mercy. And so like um, uh, Thomas Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas like failed a thousand times. He's like a baby trying to learn how to walk, you know. And so they interviewed him. They said, how does it feel to fail a thousand times? He said, I didn't fail a thousand times. I've discovered a thousand ways that a light bulb won't work. <laughs> and I just discovered one way in which they do work. But I've discovered a thousand ways they don't. He never saw it as failing. What do you see it as? Learning. And God wants us to be like Thomas Aquinas. God wants us to be like a little child. He wants to keep on trying. But you know what? Those of us who buy into this mindset that I don't want to look dumb, I want to look smart, and we're not smart, you know what we really believe about ourselves? We don't believe the gospel. I believe I'm really dumb. I don't believe the gospel. I believe that I don't have talent. I asked my staff, I said, what do you believe about yourself that you don't want anyone to know you believe about yourself? And this is a talented, holy staff. I mean, my, my ministry team, and they're like, I believe I'm not good enough. And then someone else said, I believe I'll never be as good as my dad. Someone else said, I believe that people say bad things about me. Someone else said, I just believe I'm ordinary. Basically, they're telling me, I don't feel smart, I feel dumb. I don't feel talented, I feel untalented. I don't feel flawless, I feel flawed. And I don't feel superior, I feel inferior. That's the mindset that Jesus says, change your mind. Get out of that mindset. I can't do anything with anyone who thinks that way. I need people who will change their mindset and believe in the gospel. And so there was a, this interview for astronauts. NASA was looking for astronauts. And you know what they did? They, they looked into their background, and everyone who did have success their whole life, it was just school and everything was all success, they rejected every one of those. They looked for people who had significant failure in their life, and had somehow find a way to overcome it. And that's what God's looking for, the same people NASA's looking for, people who have failure in their life and know how to keep trying, keep getting up like a little child, keep working at this, keep saying, God, give me more mercy because I still don't get it. One woman wanted to understand failure. She said, some people cope well, some people can't cope with failure. So she worked with little kids. And she gave them puzzles. And she gave them really easy puzzles. Kids love puzzles. Anyone love puzzles? Yeah, kids love puzzles. And so you know what? She gave them hard puzzles so that they would fail. And she wanted to see what they would do. And you know the really smart kids? The kids who have the wrong mindset that Jesus says, change your mind. The smartest kids in class, you know what they did with the hard puzzle? They quit trying. They quit working. They even lied. They said, oh, I got that puzzle at home. I'll just do it at home. No, they don't. They didn't want to do the puzzles anymore that they loved to do because they didn't want to look like they weren't smart. They didn't want to look like they weren't the best or superior. So they quit trying. And God says, I want you to abound in good works. I never want you to quit trying. I want people who know that they have failure in their life and they just keep going. So this ballerina, she was like Russian and the best in the whole world. She's interviewing for students. And then she would test them. And as she's working with them, she would give them praise and she'd see how they react to praise. Then she would give them correction and see how they responded to failure and correction. 
and she didn't accept any students that were energized by praise. She only took the students who were energized by correction because life is a learning process and life isn't about failure or success. Life isn't about being smart or dumb. Life's about learners or non-learners. And Jesus said, I need you to be like that ballerina. I need you to be open to correction and open to failure and just keep going and going. And so the gospel tells us who we are. We are children of God. We are created in God's image. We're all that stuff. And God says, become like a little child. Have this mind in you. Believe the good news about you. When you fall on your bottom, get back up. Yeah. When you try to say, Dad, just keep trying to say it. What do they do? Say, what's he say? Dad, dad, ba, 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 dad, dad, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's who God's looking for. This one right here, I was talking to her in the back. She's Scottish. She said her kids can't even understand her. <laughs> yeah, just keep trying. Just keep going. That's what God's saying. And so what is the gospel? What's the good news? Who does NASA want? <laughs> who does the ballerina want? Who does God want? No, not the perfect, not the successful God's looking for you, for me, right where we are. And he says, just keep doing it. Don't stop dancing. You know what? How many, if you're not talented, how many can't dance? Yeah, you don't get out there, do you? You stopped. And I heard Dan practicing a song, and it said, because of God, I can run. I can dance. I can do all that stuff, right? Just like the little child here. So who's God? Yeah, that's part of the gospel. God's our good, good father. Isn't that right? God's a good, good father. He says, wow. He said, dad, dad, did you see that? You see how good he walked? He took three steps. Oh, he fell on his behind. Here you go. A good, good father. And you know who we are? We're the ones the good, good Father loves. That's who we are. That's the gospel. That's the good news. And so what do we do? We say, God, I'm not going to buy into that mindset of trying to be smart or talented or successful or flawless. I know I'm flawed, but you're my good, good Father. And I know that. You love me. That's who you are. That's who I am. And that's our faith. And what a wonderful faith we have. I've seen many searching for answers Far and wide, but I we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say your word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you Do I? 